appears to be an intercontinental ballistic missile. It happened early Wednesday morning, just after 3 a.m. It was launched north of Pyongyang. Japan's defense minister says the missile fell into the sea about 250 kilometers off Japan's northern coast. Because it apparently flew well over 4,000 kilometers, we assume it was launched in a so-called lofted trajectory. We presume it's an ICBM type of missile, judging from the height and the trajectory. At that height, it would be the highest missile that the North has launched. Itsunori Onodera says the ICBM fell into the country's exclusive economic zone after flying for more than 50 minutes. A short time after the launch, South Korea's military responded with a military drill. This is the first missile launch by North Korea in over two months. And it is the first time since the United States relisted the country as a state sponsor of terrorism. The American president was reportedly briefed briefed about it while the missile was in mid-flight. A missile was launched a little while ago from North Korea. I will only tell you that we will take care of it. We have General Mattis in the room with us and uh, we've had a long discussion on it. It is a situation that we will handle. Trump says this would not change his policy toward the North. Security. Now, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe had this to say on the North's latest missile launch. North Korea went ahead with the launching of a ballistic missile once again. Considering the situation, it is highly likely that a missile was an ICBM. The government of Japan had been keeping the full track of the movement related to the missile launch and had been fully prepared for crisis management. Such act significantly undermines the strong determination of the international community for peaceful resolution of the issue. Such outrageous act is totally unacceptable. Japan lost a strong protest against North Korea. We will call for an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council. The international community must be united and thoroughly implement sanctions against North Korea. Japan will not yield to any provocations. We will step up pressure against North Korea to the maximum. Based on the strong Japan-US alliance, we uh, will maintain high-level alert and protect the lives of the people and peaceful life. Abe spoke with Donald Trump over the phone. Japanese government officials say the two leaders agree the countries must strengthen their defense capabilities to deter the threat by North Korea. They also reportedly agree that China needs to play a greater role in dealing with the issue. North Korea on Wednesday fired off its first missile test in over two months, reigniting global tensions over its nuclear ambitions. The Pentagon said its initial assessment was that North Korea had launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's North Korea's first missile launch since it ignited a furor by firing a ballistic missile over Japan's northern Hokkaido Island on September 15th. North Korea had recently paused amid a fiery war of words between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump, who said the U.S. would totally destroy the country in a speech at the U.N. if North Korea threatened the U.S. or its allies. This month, Trump put North Korea back on a list of U.S. state sponsors of terrorism, and its neighbor China has also stepped up measures aimed at reining it in, as it races to perfect a long-range missile that can reach the U.S. mainland. Coming on the air with remarks from President Trump on today's launch by North Korea of an intercontinental ballistic missile, that missile landing in the Sea of Japan. It was North Korea's first missile test since President Trump's visit to South Korea earlier this month. The president spoke before the press pool cameras just a few minutes ago in the Roosevelt Room. That video is set to be fed out momentarily. The president also using the moment to take shots at the Democratic House and Senate leaders who shunned a White House meeting today after the president insulted them on Twitter. As we wait for the tape to roll, let's go to NBC's Kristen Welker at the White House. Kristen, what are the headlines here? 
Well, Lester, President Trump not using some of the more inflammatory language that we have heard from him when he talks about North Korea, but still talking tough, saying it is a situation we will handle. We will take care of it. Also taking a jab at the Democratic leaders, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi, who pulled out of a planned meeting to talk about the spending bill as well as the agenda after President Trump tweeted that it didn't look like a deal was coming together. The president saying they're all talk and no action, also expressing optimism the tax bill will get passed. All right, let's quickly go to Richard Engel, our chief foreign correspondent who recently spent time in the Korean Peninsula. Richard, the early indications this missile went higher than any previous launch. What does that say? Well, Defense Secretary Mattis said that it went higher than any previous launch. And what we're talking about is an ICBM, an intercontinental ballistic missile. This is only the third time that North Korea is believed to have fired one of these. The last time was in September. Uh, this one went 3,000 miles, uh, almost up into space, before it came down just a, just a short distance from the Japanese coast. It All went right. very high. Richard, great thanks. distance, but not a threat. We want to go to that tape now. It's playing. Here's what the president said to reporters minutes ago. You probably have heard. And some of you have reported a missile was launched a little while ago from North Korea. I will only tell you that we will take care of it. We have General Mattis in the room with us, and uh, we've had a long discussion on it. It is a situation that we will handle. And with that, I may just have General Mattis say just a couple of words about uh, what he has found out. General, do you want to say just a couple of little uh, pieces of information. Yeah, the President, Senator Speaker, a little over two and a half hours ago, North Korea launched uh, an intercontinental ballistic missile. <clears throat> uh, it went higher, frankly, than any previous shot they've taken. It's a research and development effort on their part to continue building ballistic missiles that could threaten uh, everywhere in the world, basically. And uh, in response, the South Koreans have fired some pinpoint missiles out into the water to make certain North Korea understands that uh, they could be taken under fire by our ally. But the bottom line is it's a continued effort to build a threat, sir, a ballistic missile threat that uh, endangers world peace, regional peace, and certainly the United States. Thank you, General. And we will take care of that situation. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. President, can you anybody your missile launches today? Does it change anything about your basic approach to dealing with it? Nothing changed. Nothing changed. We have a very serious approach and nothing changed. We take it very seriously. Do you believe there will be a government Would you blame Democrats if that happens? What do you think right now? If that happens, I would absolutely blame the Democrats. If it happens, it's going to be over illegals pouring into the country, crime pouring into the country, no border wall, which everybody wants. I got elected partially because of a border wall. Uh, you look at the military, we want strong funding for the military. They don't. So many things. As an example, they want high taxes. We want cut taxes. We're going to cut taxes. We're going to reform. We're going to simplify. They want high taxes. We want low taxes. So there's a lot of big differences. So we'll see what happens as to shut down. We'll see. But right now, things have changed over the last two hours because two hours ago, a missile was launched. I think that will have a huge effect on Schumer and Pelosi. I think. We'll see. We're going to learn very soon. They should be calling immediately and say, we want to see you. But probably they won't because nothing to them is important other than raising taxes. That's the only thing they like doing is raising taxes. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. President Trump several minutes ago. Hello and welcome to NHK Newsline. I'm Raja Pradhan in Tokyo. We begin with an update on the ballistic missile launched from North Korea. The South Korean military's Joint Chiefs of Staff says North Korea fired the missile early Wednesday morning. Japan's defense ministry says the missile may have fallen into the country's exclusive economic zone after flying for about 50 minutes. South Korean military officials say the missile was launched from Pyongsong in South Pyongyang province and flew eastward. The South Korean military is gathering more information on the missile launch. If the launch is confirmed, it'll be the first by North Korea in over two months. Japanese government sources told NHK the government has detected three projectiles and one of them fell into the sea 210 kilometers off Aomori Prefecture in northern Japan. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshide Suga, said the government will convene a National Security Council meeting. We can never accept North Korea's repeated provocative acts. 
We will lodge a strong protest against them. They will never have a bright future if they do not resolve issues such as abductions and nuclear and missile development. We strongly urge the country to change its policy. Now, White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders wrote on Twitter that U.S. President Donald Trump was briefed on the situation in North Korea while the missile was still in the air. And we will keep giving, bringing an update on the situation as soon as we get more information. Now, North Korea has continued to accelerate its missile development. Pyongyang has carried out 19 missile launches since January, a faster pace than last year. Recent launches have included the new intermediate-range Hwasong-12. In May, the missile was fired at a steeper angle, known as a lofted trajectory, meaning it flew higher and over a shorter range than usual. Just a week later, the North fired a new version of a ballistic missile that had previously been launched from a submarine. Pyongyang also fired a missile with a new precise guidance system. It says the technology allows a shorter launch time. In June, state-run media reported on the successful first test of a new type of surface-to-ship cruise missile. It was followed by another provocation. Pyongyang boasted that they'd successfully launched an intercontinental ballistic missile called the Hwasong-14. In August, a stronger UN sanctions resolution came into effect. The North Korean military responded by announcing detailed plans to launch four missiles simultaneously over Japan and into waters near Guam. <laughs> But instead, the country fired a single Hwasong-12 missile in a different direction over northern Japan two times in three weeks. The latest launch flew over 3,700 kilometers. This is 1,000 kilometers more than the previous one. Pyongyang showed that Guam is within its range. People in Japan are increasingly concerned, especially in the northern region. I was hiding in a shower booth just in case. I'm annoyed. I'm glad nothing happened, but I'm still anxious. North Korea now seems much more confident about its missile capabilities. State media reported Kim Jong-un said their final goal is military equilibrium with the U.S. and that the North has almost completed its nuclear force. Experts have warned Pyongyang is on the verge of succeeding in its goal of being able to hit the United States with a nuclear-tipped ICBM. A U.S. foreign policy think tank came to this conclusion after conducting analysis of footage of a previous missile launch. On July 28, North Korea fired a Hwasong-14 missile, which it claimed was an ICBM. It's estimated to have flown for 45 minutes before plunging into the Sea of Japan. NHK cameras in northern Japan captured a flash of the missile before it landed. Experts at Carnegie Endowment for International Peace analyzed the footage to determine if it depicted a re-entry vehicle, the part of an ICBM that could deliver a nuclear weapon. They estimate that the object was falling at a speed of 6 kilometers per second from a height of 44 kilometers. This is slower than the normal speed of a re-entry vehicle falling to Earth. If it's the re-entry vehicle and the re-entry vehicle is tumbling, um, that would give us some questions about the exact status of North Korea's program. 
but their analysis wasn't conclusive as to whether it was the re-entry vehicle or another part of the missile. The North Koreans successfully launched the missile. It climbed to a very, very high altitude. Um, it um, uh, fell almost all the way back to Earth as it should have done. And it was only at the very end of the flight that something went wrong. They say the underlying point is that the test was nearly successful and in terms of missile development, this is significant. The North Korean scientists are very capable. Um, they've proven themselves over time to be good and effective engineers. If they don't have an ICBM that can hit the US today, they will have in the very near future. Kim Jong-un watched the launch from a close distance. Experts point out Pyongyang wanted to show they are confident that ICBM development is nearly completed. The North's ruling party newspaper praised the launch and claimed it panicked the United States. Kim Jong-un is the third son of former leader Kim Jong-il. His regime uses military might to consolidate its power. Kim Jong-un as the heir apparent. <laughs> The young leader faced a challenge to cement his power in the party and with the military. In his first public speech, he vowed to follow his father's lead. 사회주의 강성 국가 건설 위협을 성과적으로 실현하자면 첫째도 둘째도 셋째도 인민군대를 백방으로 강화해 나가야 합니다. 세우의 승리를 향하여 앞으로. Observers say that reflects his relatively stable. Now it appears North Korea has made significant progress in its missile development. South Korea's intelligence agency briefed the National Assembly this morning, saying this morning's missile was an upgraded version of the Hwasong 14. And it added that there could be more provocations to come. Kim Minji reports. South Korea's intelligence agency says North Korea's latest missile is the most advanced ICBM that it has tested so far. At a parliamentary briefing on Wednesday, the National Intelligence Service was quoted as saying that it was an upgrade from the ICBMs the North has launched previously, flying higher and faster. The NIS said the distance flown was about 960 kilometers, with an apogee of around 4,500 kilometers. Given the high altitude and speed, it appears to be an improvement on the Hwasong-14. The spy agency's analysis is in line with Pyongyang's own statement, which it made hours after the test, claiming a successful launch of the Hwasong-15. The NIS said there were several likely reasons for the latest provocation to show that the North can hit the U.S. to protest the sanctions against it and to solidify internal unity. It also said the test was foreseen given that Pyongyang was recently relisted by the U.S. as a state sponsor of terrorism and that the regime has historically launched a provocation 70 percent of the time when it is warned of a response. North Korea has broken its 10-week lull in missile test launches by firing what appears to be its longest-range intercontinental ballistic missile to date. The latest test, which took place this Wednesday, is the 17th missile launch by the regime this year. And it's the 11th missile test by the North during the Moon Jae-in administration, starting with the Hwasong-12 that Pyongyang launched just days after the South Korean president took office. The pattern of tests conducted by the regime this year indicated there were between one and four nuclear or missile tests every month, so the two-month lull in tests had raised hopes, now proven false, that the regime may be ready for diplomatic dialogue. The latest launch, which broke the silence, raised speculation as to whether it can be taken as a sign of direct provocation against the U.S. as it comes on the heels of U.S. President Donald Trump's announcement on November 20th that the U.S. is designating North Korea as a state sponsor of terrorism. However, Cho sung a senior researcher at the Institute for National Security Strategy, says that based on the altitude and range of the latest missile test, it is most likely to have been planned in advance rather than instigated by certain events. He also added that the two-month lull in provocations was most likely for preparation and technical fine-tuning to accomplish the North's year-end goal of perfecting its nuclear and missile technology instead of a sign of change, as the international community had hoped.
At 12 noon local North Korean time, a special announcement was broadcast on North Korea's state media TV. It declared that a brand new weapon had been successfully launched early Wednesday morning, the Hwasong-15 ICBM. More advanced than the previous Hwasong-14 model, according to the state media, the missile could reach all of the mainland United States. It declared that this rocket meant that the regime had met its goal of completing its nuclear weapons development program. Leader Kim Jong-un, who oversaw the launch, added that the North had realized the completion of its state nuclear force. However, although this rocket suggests a leap forward in the regime's ballistic weapons technology, there is still further to go. No one has ever declared that they have completed ICBM development after performing high trajectory launches. Unless North Korea fires this new Hwasong-15 at a regular trajectory, successfully re-enters the atmosphere and hits a specific target, they cannot be said to have a fully formed ICBM. Pyongyang's statement also said the missile was a victory achieved by the people despite difficulties imposed on the regime. However, the statement concludes by saying North Korea is a responsible nuclear power that loves peace and that would not pose a threat to anyone as long as the interests of North Korea are not infringed upon. This statement and the nature of the launch suggest that while Pyongyang wanted to carry out a provocation, they were also wary of too strong a reaction. It is a provocation, but it is a very measured one. It didn't fly over Japan like before, and there is not enough evidence to say it is a completed ICBM. So far, no footage or photos have been released of Wednesday's launch, but they are expected to come within the next day or two, whereupon they'll be scrutinized to verify just how far the regime has come in its nuclear weapons technology. The Pentagon says it was an intercontinental ballistic missile that North Korea launched on Wednesday, its first such missile test in more than two months. The missile flew about a thousand kilometers before splashing down in the Sea of Japan. Tokyo was furious. I believe the international community needs to be united and to fully implement sanctions against North Korea. Japan will not back down in the face of provocation, but maximize pressure on North Korea. As was Washington. I will only tell you that we will take care of it. We have General Mattis in the room with us, and uh, we've had a long discussion on it. It is a situation that we will handle. The bottom line is it's a continued effort to build a threat, sir, a ballistic missile threat that uh, endangers world peace, regional peace, and certainly the United States. In response, South Korea test-fired its own missiles, a show of force against its northern neighbor. At the State Department, officials said Secretary Rex Tillerson left a meeting with the King of Jordan in order to consult with allies. And at the United Nations, a sense of alarm. If it was launched, you know, towards the island or over the <clears throat> Japan, uh, if it, f it fell, you know, in the mm, economic zone, it would be, of course, an even greater, uh, uh, let's say, danger to uh, ships, to airplanes. The UN Security Council recently passed two resolutions imposing new sanctions on Pyongyang as punishment. But analysts say this latest launch shows Pyongyang doesn't care about international opinion. And part of that is, I think, to signal to Beijing, you know, don't push us too hard because we, we're not going to back down and we could go a little crazy, you know, and it might not be so good for you either. North Korea fired a long-range ballistic missile early Wednesday morning, identified by the regime as a newly developed Hwasong-15 ICBM. The missile was fired at around 3.17 a.m. from Pyongsong, a city located 30 kilometers north of Pyongyang. It flew 960 kilometers eastward for about 50 minutes and landed in the waters west of Japan. The missile was launched at a lofted angle, reaching 4,500 kilometers, higher than any other previously launched North Korean missile. Hwasong-15 is seen to be an upgraded version of the Hwasong-14 ICBM. Compared to the Hwasong-14 ICBMs launched in July, experts say Hwasong-15 seems to have a stronger engine and so flies farther. The previous Hwasong-14 missiles could fly up to 8 or 9,000 kilometers, reaching the western part of the U.S., but Wednesday's missile will be able to fly 11 to 12,000 kilometers. That covers the whole United States, including the eastern area. And Pyongyang aimed to make an even greater impact out of this missile launch, launching it at early dawn. Firing a missile at 3 o'clock in the morning is indeed a sudden attack and helps the regime see how quick South Korea and the U.S. are to respond. Also, as it's daytime in the U.S., the North aimed to send an even more alarming message to the U.S. 
But in contrast to how a couple of the regime's missiles flew over Japan in August and September and fell in the waters east of Japan, this time Pyongyang decided to step back. If the North makes its missile land near the U.S., then the political shock it sends to the world will be too large for it to handle, which may possibly lead to stronger international missile reentry. The Joint Chiefs of Staff say the recent launch could be seen as a protest against the recent economic sanctions against the regime, as well as Washington reinstating North Korea as a state sponsor of terrorism. The South Korean military stressed it is never letting its guard down and is always ready to strike back. South Korean forces launched precision strike missiles near the northern limit line in the EC just six minutes after the North Korean launch was detected. The JCS says it involved the Army's missile unit, one of the Navy's Aegis destroyers, and one of the Air Force's KF-16 fighter jets, each firing at a simulated target with the distance calibrated to match that of the location where North Korea test-fired its missile. The South Korean military is keeping close tabs on North Korea's military activities. Our military could destroy the origin of the provocation and nuclear facilities with precision on any given day from the ground, sea or air. Every day that passes, North Korea demonstrates a new capability. The one that you mentioned, uh, the potential hydrogen bomb or the, the warhead that would be a two-stage warhead, is something that I believe is, is an actuality. There are some who think that this is an enhanced uh, fission bomb, that it's not actually a fusion weapon. But that would mean that they'd have to use so much of their fissile material that that wouldn't probably be likely. And it was over 200 kilotons of yield. So this is a big bomb. And at the same time, they were the ones that uh, threatened to use it as an EMP uh, weapon, which would mean a high-altitude nuclear burst that would interact with the ionosphere and, and, and create a massive rush of ionized particles to the Earth, which could overload some of our most critical electrical components and put us in a, in a very bad situation without electricity. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's the potential. And talking about things that we deal with every day, that our society has become so dependent upon. I mean, everyday life, that would be devastating, uh, just that effect. I want to um, bring in something here that we heard from Senator Cardin, uh, ranking Democrat over uh, in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, about what he says about how we're handling North Korea. Here's his take. Diplomacy keeps us safe and allows us to use soldiers only when we need soldiers. And it has not received the priority it should under this administration. What do you make of that? Well, you know, diplomacy is always heard in the shadow of, of military might and capability. And uh, the Clinton administration used so much diplomacy that uh, North Korea got nuclear weapons. And it's something that I think is laid uh, primarily on their doorstep. This administration has made it very clear to North Korea that there's a different uh, mindset in the White House. And I believe uh, that it's very important that North Korea and their leader, that uh, Mr. Kim Jong-un, understands that if they launch a nuclear weapon and it hits uh, civilian populations in the United States of America, that they will need a Geiger counter to find Pyongyang. And if they understand that, I believe that that's probably the kind of deterrent that this administration has made more credible that has the best chance of, of being able to prevent these kind of tragedies from occurring. What do you make of these discussions they're having on Capitol Hill, a hearing just days ago about whether or not our current president is capable of exercising control over our nuclear program. Here's a little bit of what Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat out of uh, Connecticut, had to say about how he thinks about that issue. We are concerned that the president of the United States is so unstable, is so volatile, has a decision-making process that is so quixotic that he might order a nuclear weapon strike that is wildly out of step with U.S. national security.